This demonstration involves a two-part electrochemistry demonstration. The first part is a qualitative description that really goes through the idea of single replacement reactions. And it can be used really in a first semester topic when we get into the types of reactions, showing how precipitates form when, uh, when the ions react with certain metals. Okay? In the second part of the demonstration, we will then look at how that reaction, that single replacement reaction, can produce a certain cell potential in terms of voltage. What I have set up on the whiteboard in front of me are five strips of metal, copper, zinc, magnesium, lead, and silver. Across the top, we're going to use the nitrates of the particular salts of those metals. I've seen this done before where pieces of metal are cut into little bitty pieces, put into well plates, and then you have students put the solutions in the well plates. I like this setup a little bit better. The reason being is I go through very little metal with this. I can use these strips year after year after year and just continuously clean them up. So now I've cut down on the amount of money I'm spending on metals because oftentimes as kids do the labs, as you're known to do in reality, is that they get mixed up, kids will pitch them out, they get used up. In this case, I can set this kit up with the solutions. I pull it out when I'm ready to do my single replacements. The next year, I have the students clean them off and shine them up, and we're ready to go again, okay, with a, replacing very few amounts of metals. Easy setup, easy cleanup, and, and not much waste. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put a drop of each of these solutions on here. So I'm going to begin that process now, and we're going to take the copper 2 nitrate, and we're going to see a data table start to form as this goes. And the magnesium you've got to be a little careful with because it's a pretty little thin strip. And we'll run that down like such. And then we will take the zinc nitrate and we'll put a drop of zinc nitrate on each metal. And what we're looking for here, the evidence of a reaction, is a precipitate forming in that drop. We'll move on to the magnesium nitrate. And not only do you get very quick results with this lab, but you also see the relationships between how the metals react. And so we are actually building, in addition to a data table, we're building an activity series of metals. A quick and dirty method here. And we keep our silver nitrate in here so it doesn't reduce down to solid silver. And I would like to try to make sure that these metals are all about the same length, so we can show that. And what I've noticed here is I've got some reactions already starting to take place. Okay, If we start to look on the piece of copper metal, and I have an assistant here, Mary. Mary's going to help us put a little bit of data up on the board so we can see it. But if we look at that, really our data table is sitting right in front of us. But we'll mark it out and talk about it a little bit. In the first one with the copper, I've got one reaction with the silver ion all the way in the upper right hand corner. We've got a yes in that data point that yes, we have a reaction taking place. I would have the students write a, really a two part piece of data, a yes and then black precipitate. The yes is the answer to the question, is there a reaction taking place? Then the black, you don't have to do that at this point in time. We'll know because we can see it here on the camera. The next thing I would have them write is, yes, black, yes, white precipitate, blue solution forming. Okay. In our next metal, the next row across with the zinc metal, I see a reaction taking place with copper, 2 plus. The next two are skipped, and the next one that's reacting is the lead, 2 plus, and also the silver plus ion. Okay. With the magnesium strip, I'm seeing a little bit of copper, copper 2 plus, settling out. I'm seeing a little bit of bubbling on the zinc, not much precipitate, but a little reaction going on there. I'm seeing none with the magnesium. I'm seeing a yes with the lead and a precipitate with the silver ion. In the next one with the lead strip, I see the Copper 2 plus is forming a precipitate, and I see the silver plus 1 is forming a precipitate. And then in the silver, there doesn't appear to be anything happening at all. Okay?
And so now we can translate what's going on in front of us to what's going on on the board. Thank you, Mary, for writing down the data for us. We appreciate it. As we start to interpret what's going on here, we're going to move to the board and take a look at this. And I would have the kids talk about and look at which metal is the most reactive metal and which ion is the most reactive ion. And from that, this is a very powerful tool that leads us into the idea of activity series of metals. And what we'll see later on is the reduction potential chart. And it's a very quick and easy way to put that together. And what I really like about this is we're going to go down the metals first. And if you look, copper reacted with one thing. And I'm talking about the solids now. Zinc, that reacted with three things. Magnesium, metal reacted with four ions. Lead reacted with two ions. Silver didn't react at all. And if we look at our ions across the top, copper reacted with three. Three and one. There's something that's going to flush out about that. Zinc only reacted, the zinc ions only reacted with one other metal. Magnesium didn't react with any of our metals. Lead reacted with two of our metals. And silver reacted with four of our metals. When we look at the comparison of what the metal does with its ion, we get that nice balance there between those two ideas, such that the most reactive metal has the least reactive ion, and the least reactive metal has the most reactive ion. And I think that's really, really powerful to show kids that that's what's going to develop over time. And so if we look at the reactions from our data table and what we saw on the, on the uh, lab, we can come over here to the easel, and really what we have developed is an activity series of metals. And we saw that by the number of ions that the metals reacted with. And we know this because this is what we want to present to the students for single replacement reactions to tell whether a single replacement reaction is going to take place or not. Magnesium has a greater reactivity than zinc, iron, lead, copper. And then we move down to our precious metals, silver, gold, platinum, that have very low levels of reactivity. Uh, and that's why we use them in, in jewelry, um, because we don't want them to oxidize. And so that's our activity series of metals. If we take a look and isolate just one of the reactions that took place on the well, what happens then is we look at the zinc-copper reaction. We know that, that uh, copper precipitated on the zinc, the copper ions. So if we look at this, the zinc has lost electrons. I know that zinc loses electrons, zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons to become the zinc 2 plus. That means that since it goes up in charge, the loss of electrons is oxidation. And we can get into that if we were to talk about electrochemistry. The copper, 2 plus, has to gain two electrons in order to go to solid copper with a zero charge. So that's going from 2 plus down to zero. The gaining of electrons is reduction. And the mnemonic device that I give my students is that Leo the lion goes grr, and quite a few people use this. Loss of electrons is oxidation. The gain of electrons is reduction. A lot of people also use oil rig. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. And your students can make up their own as they wish. If I want to write the complete equation for this, then we come back up to the balanced part of that reaction, canceling out the two electrons. Whatever's on the left and right can cancel out. So that's just one way to easily get through single replacement reaction in a nice, concise fashion using the strips of metal with five solutions. Thank you.